Good morning. It's Sunday the 16th of April 2023. 13 days since I've had my prostatectomy. And in general, yeah, we're feeling good. I uh, had a few ups and downs on the way since my last video. But uh, I'm just going to give you a few little tips and tricks that I've uh, um, gained throughout the last two weeks. First one is you have to make sure that you drink plenty. Um, water, juices, anything you want, just, just drink as much as you can. It flushes the bladder through. Um, the, the bladder's got lots of toxins in and it just needs to be flushed through. And so you don't have to worry too much about what you drink because you've got the, the catheter attached to you, which I've got a little example here. So it fills up through the day and you've got a little spout where you just release it and this tube up here is attached to to yourself so that will catch everything you can it can and let's say you just flush it through and uh, so the catheter looks after everything. Second one is just make sure you can walk as much as you can. I've done a couple of miles on the first uh, four or five days after the operation it just opens the bowels it gets the bowels working again fresh air is good for you it's um, you, you have to walk what you can but just keep that little exercise going don't be lazy and sort of sit down all day um, just keep keep walking as much as you can it releases the co2 from your body even <coughs> excuse me even a couple of weeks after my stomach is still bloated so I've probably got some little bit of CO2 in there so the more walking you can do the better. One of the big things I've found the last two weeks is sleeping. Um, I decided I'd go for a recliner rather than the bed. The recliner is good because you can't move too far. Um, with the bed, the bed, the problem with the bed is that you're always thinking if, if you toss and turn over uh, at night time you could yank your catheter uh, it could be uncomfortable and I decided that now recline a chair you're sort of rigid in the chair a couple of cushions you can't move too far away and <clears throat> the catheter shouldn't uh, cause too much of a problem the problem I, uh, I found with also sleeping is that your your catheter it, it needs to be below your bladder and if it's not then if you're level then the urine just backs up it backs up because your leg your leg, your, your leg has got to be below your bladder if this is your bladder and I found when I was sleeping on the bed I was like this and again <clears throat> it just it built up and overnight um, I did have a problem where the catheter got blocked and it was basically due to sediment crystallization and I think it was because I was lying flat for about six or seven hours and further back where it goes into your body also crystallized um, the problem I had then was that with a catheter being blocked you still need to pass urine and it's got to go somewhere if it's not going in the bag it's got to go somewhere uh, it wasn't pleasant all through last Thursday um, it's got to come out somewhere and yeah you do unfortunately you do um, if you can't get to the toilet you do wee yourself it's unpleasant so we had to quickly change that so a couple of telephone calls to the hospital and to the district nurse got an appointment at the hospital that evening time and what they decided to do was to change the catheter because it was totally blocked they tried to flush it through a saline solution with a syringe they'll you've got a couple of tubes coming out of you and one of them is where they put a syringe in and they push about 60 mils, mils of saline solution back into the bladder but there was no there was nothing at all it just got totally blocked 
so they couldn't flush it through so the surgeon and the doctors and all that said right take this one out and put a new one in <clears throat> wasn't pleasant no it wasn't pleasant at all taken out wasn't too bad but reinserting a new one was yeah it was tears to the eyes it wasn't it wasn't pleasant at all so <clears throat> I think with a recliner you can always keep your leg below your bladder at all times and most of the times I have slept in the recline, I haven't had a problem. It was just that one night where I um, probably had a good night's sleep. And again, you don't know when you go into the toilet. And it was just, it just levelled. It was meant to be like this, all come down to the bottom. But it wasn't, it all, it all sort of sedimented in there. Then back up the pipes. So, <clears throat> one thing I would say is regular hygiene. Every day. Um, these tubes will come out of your just give them a good clean with a alcohol wipe and uh, just keep them so they make sure they are completely um, not gunked up so I would um, recliner is the was best for me it's not for everybody but it is best for me another thing you have to keep doing is is these injections the blood thinner once a day, could be two a day, depending on your weight. Um, I was meant to, because I'm over 100 kilos, I was meant to have two a day. Uh, yeah, I'm, I, you, know, you have to self-inject yourself. It's, they're not the biggest needles, but um, we've done one a day, sometimes two a day, but uh, you have to make sure you do them for 28 days. Um, it's inevitable with all the bacteria in the bags and everything, you're gonna get a water infection. I did, um, again, when we were up there on Thursday, I explained that I had some shivers and shakes and you know, just generally didn't feel too, too, too great, to be honest. So they gave me some antibiotics for a water infection, just for five days, because I'm nearing the end of my, my catheter. So since I've been taking them, everything's back to normal. Uh, no stinging um, in the wee uh, shakes and shivers are fine so we've got that under control but it's, it's inevitable there's so much bacteria around uh, so you've got the catheter in for two weeks so it's always going to be um, something going on um, just the last thing really is the wounds the wounds are healing fine haven't got so much pain in the stomach now they're still pretty tender to touch but uh, they're not too bad, it's sort of scabbing up nice and hopefully they'll just sort of fade away. You've got dissolvable stitches in there, so it'll, they'll, they'll soon be gone. So just a quick, quick, quick um, video today. Catheter comes out on Tuesday, and then the fun begins when you've got to retrain the bladder again. So we're, uh, we're certainly not out of the woods yet, but we're, we're done all right. We're done all right. I expected a few little um, ups and downs. But the worst thing is you need to look after your catheter. You really do, because if you don't, it really does become a bit of a problem with the uh, blockage. And sometimes they can flush it through. I went to the district nurse on the Thursday. She couldn't flush it through, although she didn't try particularly that hard. She didn't have a syringe. She just had a bottle of water where she attaches to one of the pipes and just sort of try and fl sort of small flush it. But she didn't really want to have a go at it. So I'm glad I went to the hospital and had it completely changed. Um, there's nothing you can do about it. The, where the blockage was is where it's gone into my bladder. And that's where drinking comes into it. You know, you need to drink a lot because if you're not drinking enough, you're still flushing through your bladder and you get the, the sediment from the bladder just, just blocking these little tubes. Now, these little tubes are no bigger than that. It doesn't take a lot to crystallize and um, um, just block so when there's a blockage uh, it wasn't it's not pleasant so just try and look after your catheter and so I, I do put it down to sleeping on the bed where my leg was level and the urine wasn't going into the bag it was just sort of sitting there and back and all the way up so um, that's that's what I think so from then onwards I'm just back in the recline it's only for a few more days so we can get on with that so I'm going to do a, an update sometime next week when the catheter do come out and I'll try and share the the experiences of what happens 
to retrain the bladder. So thanks very much for watching all the videos and I'll get back to you. Thank you.